Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ishil Porkar. I'm a third year radiology resident from Topiwala National Medical College and BYL Naira Charitable Hospital, Mumbai. Today, we'll talk about role of MRI in acute hyperglycemic brain injury. The brain relies heavily on glucose for optimal functioning because the neurons have a high metabolic rate and can neither generate nor store significant amounts of glucose. Increased plasma glucose can jeopardize normal neuronal homeostasis over a period of minutes. Relatively stable plasma glucose levels are therefore essential for survival and are maintained through a highly complex network of enzymes, hormones, and signaling mechanisms with insulin playing a dominant role. Acute hyperglycemic brain injury can cause major morbidity and significant mortality. It is associated with DM type 2 being more common than type 1. It encompasses diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperglycemic, hypercosmolar state, hyperglycemia-induced hemichoria hemipalismus. Lab investigations, they, use, they show raised plasma glucose levels and raised serum HbA1c. Uh, ketonemia and ketonuria are seen in diabetic ketoacidosis. However, they are absent or minimal in the other two states. Uh, the first case we have, a 56-year-old female who presented to us with blurring of vision and irritability since one month. She was a known case of type 2 TM. On examination, the motor examinations were normal, higher mental functions were normal. Clinical lobe examination, it showed decreased vision in bilateral eyes. Rest of the clinical lobes were normal. Sensory system investigation was normal. Other system examinations were unremarkable. Uh, on lab, lab investigations, we saw serum glucose was raised, HbA1c was raised, blood and urine ketones were absent. Uh, rest of the lab also was unremarkable. NCCT brain showed no significant abnormality. On MRI, we saw uh, restricted diffusion on DWIDC, subtle T2 flare hypointensities, and subtle blooming on FFE images involving the white matter of left parietal and occipital lobe. Uh, the second case we have, a 43-year-old male who was a known case of diabetes type 2, uh, presented with sudden onset focal seizures and loss of consciousness for a brief period. On examination, the motor examination was normal, higher mental functions, the patient was lethargic, clinical lab examination was normal, sensory and other systemic examinations were normal and unremarkable. Lab investigation, we saw random RBS was raised, HbA1c was raised, blood and urine ketones were positive, uh, the patient had hyponatrium and hyperkalemia, the serum bicarbonates were uh, low, and rest of the work was unremarkable. So basically, the patient was in diabetic ketoacidosis. Uh, MRI, Excel sections of MRI brain showed an ill-defined area of T2 flare hypointensity in subcortical white matter involving the right parietal region with multifocal patchy areas of diffusion restriction involving the overlying gray matter. The third case we have as a 58-year-old female was not a known case of any major illnesses who presented to us with sudden onset development of continuous non-rhythmic involuntary movements involving left half of body, that is hemibalismus and hemichoria, since one week. The symptoms they resolved during sleep. On examination, the left upper and lower extremity, hemibalismus and hemichoria like moments were seen, higher mental functions, grade of examination, sensory system examination, and uh, general examination were normal. Uh, we saw uh, raised RBS and HbA1c as lab investigation. The blood and urine ketones were negative. The rest of the lab work was unremarkable. On uh, NCCT brain, we saw a hypertensity in the right lentiform nucleus. On MRI brain, we saw hyperintense signal on T1 with pulse contrast enhancement in right lentiform nucleus, no signal alteration on T2 flare, no blooming on uh, FFE, or, and no restriction diffusion on DWI in ADC. To conclude, hyperglycemia is not uncommon and can show myriad of imaging findings. The presentation is often non-specific, and objective findings of HCHB, memory loss, hemiparesis, and often uh, coma clinically moving slow. In acute settings, these patients invariably undergo an NCCT of the head initially. It may be occasionally useful, but is often non-diagnostic, particularly in case of HHS. MR imaging is a study of choice in these cases and is often used to determine diagnosis and prognosis. A timely and accurate diagnosis would expedite correct treatment and limit neuronal injury in the early stage when changes are potentially reversible. Thank you.